Welcome back to the show. This is episode 18. One of the most difficult areas for me to talk about has always been the topic of grief and loss. I thought it would be necessary for me to find podcast guests who could help us to consider these types of emotional issues in ways that could make us feel like we could embrace the topic of grief and loss with the joy with which we have loved the people, pets, and experiences that we have lost. Fortunately for us, I've found the perfect person to help us. My guest, Jacqueline Stoitler, is an art therapist and grief coach who helps grieving women navigate their healing journey without leaving their loved one behind by using art making, mindfulness, and humor. You're going to hear Jacqueline's personal story of loss inside this episode, and you'll also get to see how wonderful, beautiful, and brilliant she is. Let's go listen to the episode. Hi, I'm Dr. Christine Lee, and I'm a psychologist and a procrastination coach. I've helped thousands of people move past procrastination and overwhelm so they could begin working to their potential. In this podcast, you're going to learn powerful strategies for getting your mind, body, and energy to work together so that you can focus on what's really important and accomplish the goals you want to achieve. When you start living within your full power, you're going to see how being productive can be easy and how you can create success on demand. Welcome to the Make Time for Success podcast. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the Make Time for Success podcast. Today, I am so grateful, even before we begin, to invite my good friend and new friend to the show. Her name is Jacqueline Stoitler. And we met very beautifully, I would say, online in a coaching program that we had both attended. And Jacqueline was just so gracious with her help to a total stranger who was calling for help at the time. And we got to know each other. And I just felt very moved to share her with you all who are my kind listeners on this show. So Jacqueline, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Christine, for having me. Uh, It's a pleasure. And yeah, since we met last year in the summer, I think, you have been such a wonderful support as well. So it was really fun that one weekend when you had some technical problems and I'm not really a super technical person, but I knew what you needed to know. And so uh, we connected right away on that level and ever since I feel really, really connected to you and your work. So thank you very much for having me today. Well, the feeling is very mutual. I think we have a lot of areas of alignment and mutual understanding. So thank you for joining me. So could you introduce yourself to our audience? Tell us what you would like us to know about you, your background, what you love to do in life. Sure. Thank you. Uh, So like you know now, my name is Jacqueline Stoidler and I call myself the creative grief coach. I have a background in art therapy and you might hear a slight little accent in my speech. So I'm originally from Switzerland, but I have been living in Canada for the last 17 years and I can almost not believe it that it has been that long. So I'm a really proud Swiss Canadian and My background in art therapy, I graduated in 2000, actually in 2000, it's 21 years in a few weeks that I have been working as an art therapist and the grief coaching part came about eight years ago when my mom died. And it was just, you know, as a As an art therapist, I should have known how to deal with that challenging time and the grief was anticipated and I just thought I had it all together and then she died and I did not expect to be so taken apart by that grief. I didn't feel anymore that I had any ground under my feet. It was really like my whole life that I knew how to go forward 
was stopped because the one person that knew me so very well and always had my back no matter what I did, she was always there for me. She was gone. And I really felt lost and didn't know anymore um, who am I and is therapy still the thing to do for me or should I go into a new direction? But I always heard her voice kind of in my heart and also in, in my head that always said, you are a natural helper. And that is true. I always say in my former life, I actually worked as a teacher in Switzerland before I became an art therapist. And it was the, the need of helping in a different way that I became an art therapist. And then that whole creative part really became even more a part of my life. I was already a painter and I just, yeah, it just took that into that helping piece as well, which was fantastic. And like I said, then my mom died in 2013 and everything got kind of turned upside down. And after really three, four months where I was just going to work, coming home, crying, go to sleep and do the same thing over and over every day. After about three months, my partner said, hey, Jacqueline, this is not healthy what you're doing. And I'm kind of, you know, sitting there crying, saying, no, it has to flow. It has to flow. And while saying it, I realize nothing is actually flowing. I'm just repeating the same circle over and over again. So I just kind of sat down with myself and I looked at what I knew as an art therapist and I started to paint and to write about my feelings. I created little rituals that I could implement to really honor my mom. And yeah, it became this little program that I did for myself and then realized oh my God, if I, as an art therapist, don't know how to get help, there must be other people that don't know how to get help. And the Healing for Grieving Hearts program was born. I took some special um, training in grief recovery and it just resonated with what I was already doing. And so, yeah. And ever since I'm working with women, that are grieving a loss. It can be any loss and it's very fulfilling. And last year, Christine, like you know, when we met, I was in the process of creating a membership that is more affordable. And my time is also only (laughs) that much in a day so that I could uh, touch and help more women that are grieving navigate their healing journey, how I like to call it. I love your story. It's a beautiful integrated one with so many different phases that kind of gently come together where you're doing work that really is so meaningful and beautiful and transformative to the women that you touch and the the people who are in those women's lives. So thank you for sharing that background story. I have a few questions. One of them is when you were finding yourself in that prolonged period of grief after your mom passed, how do you understand that section or those symptoms of the constant crying or the not being able to let go or the feeling like your energy is stuck. What are your thoughts about that period of time or that group of symptoms? I just think that I was really good in not looking at what was happening. You know, I had some um, stress relieving pieces that I did, um, habits. For instance, I watched Netflix for hours and hours so that I didn't have to really face what I was feeling inside and what was going on. So it just took my mind to another place. Other people might go and shop for new shoes or new books, or for me, it is has always been TV. And with Netflix, it makes it even worse. <laughs> so yeah, and it, it was really that point 
where my husband just said, this is not normal. And I had to fight him, right? And today I would say to everyone that is in that position and has the question, is this normal? I would say, yes, it actually is normal. And it can happen to anyone that we get stuck. And three months actually is not a long period of time at all. And don't get me wrong. I'm still grieving the loss of my mom. There are still really tough times when there is a birthday coming up because we share the birthday. So it's always my birthday, her birthday, my sadness that she is not around anymore, but also at the same time, my happiness that I am and that I can still honor her and celebrate. So that kind of feeling that the grief is not normal should perhaps kind of point you in a direction to look a little bit closer, but also feel okay that that there are things that we are doing to get through a grieving process that seem perhaps a little bit unhealthy, but in the end, they help us also to to stay afloat. You're making me wonder if when people might be tagged as having not normal grief, that that is actually a reflection of the depth of the connection that they had with the person that they lost? That is definitely a part. Uh, Sometimes it might also be that we just have experienced a lot of loss in our lives. And that one loss that comes on top of it just makes the whole thing explode in your feelings and with your emotions. And I really think that sometimes we we can dig into our resilience faster and you know find all those pieces that help us to get through a difficult situation like that. And sometimes that resilience door just closes. And with my mom, that door closed for a while. And I was really kind of telling myself that crying was the right thing to do. And I'm still thinking crying is the right thing to do, (laughs) to let that love flow and that overflowing sadness come out. But at a point, you also have to find, have to sounds really harsh, but uh, to acknowledge that you find a place where you can deal better with the flow of the emotions. And that can be in painting them out, uh, writing in a journal, having little rituals, like I said before, buying their favorite flowers, celebrating with others their birthdays or anniversaries, and sharing stories, really. You know, we want to keep our loved one, if we had a really good, loving relationship, that relationship has not died with them. You're just taking it a little bit differently in our hearts and we are moving forward with them. Yes. Beautiful. As I'm watching and listening to you describe these processes, I'm feeling my own body reacting. I don't know if that is a common situation that you go through as well when you're helping women to grieve and to enter into a situation of gratitude? Is it a bodily change? Um, There are times when, yes, when that happens. I mean, we all know how, when we hear music, for instance, how our body reacts immediately or our memory kicks in immediately when we hear a special piece that reminds us of whatever. It can be a wonderful situation when we graduated or when we met our first love or when somebody died because we might have had a music piece that connected us so very well. And that is really our body has stored all those memories. And yes, so when I'm working with uh, grieving women, it can happen that we start to cry together. And some might say, but you have to be removed and be kind of 
clear that this is not you that is grieving, but I have found that it is easier for me to work with someone when I let my feelings that come up flow as well. I am always in control as the person, as the grief coach on the other side, because I'm, I know I cry. So I make really sure that I know I'm not kind of switching into my own grief. I'm crying out of compassion for the story that I'm hearing and the person's feelings and sadness. So it's, it's kind of that balance that I think I can keep really very well. And also by doing that, I'm not taking the feelings with me into my life outside the session. It's really, it stays with that person and with that session. And I always have little pieces of like a little gong that I have at the beginning of the session and at the end of the session so that the body again through the ear hears there is a beginning and there is an end. And with that, it can kind of that sacred space that we create together can be hold in that space between the gong sound and it makes it easier for both sides to step out and go back into our everyday life. I really like the gong sound technique. I think I'm mm-hmm. going to borrow your technique already. Yeah. And I'm also curious if you wouldn't mind sharing the kind of rituals that one could develop or create to honor the grief and honor the loved one as well, and to assist in moving ourselves forward? Yeah, so I have done a lot of reading, right, about rituals and what works and what not. So it's a combination. It's not all my ideas. The ideas are out there. And one that I really, really are drawn to is having like a bowl of sand and candles and at a birthday, for instance, or anniversary, if you can safely bring together some friends of your loved one as well. But you can also do it in a distance, kind of over Zoom ritual that everybody has a candle that they light. And when they light it, they talk about a trait that they really loved about them. For instance, my mother, she had a really great humor. So I always love to tell stories about things that were so funny that she did or told us. And so that candle is lit. You tell the story and you put it in the sand when you're done. And going around the table like that or going around a circle of Zoom users, uh, it really also creates that space of love and humor and storytelling. And it's always so fun to recognize that others still have also those stories so close to their heart. My thought is that it's re-enlivening the spirit of the person, that the person comes right back. It sounds really beautiful. I love that, yeah, when you say it that way. Now, my thought goes to being stuck. Mm -hmm. And though you have this beautiful compassion that you have philosophies and rituals, we can get stuck in so many different ways. You're making me think our stuckness is, is so meaningful because we're hanging on to something and we're refusing all the other options. Do you gently guide people forward? Do you wait it out? Do you address it with words? Do you paint it out? What are your actions? I think all of the above that you just mentioned. Um, The thing is that when someone comes to me and approaches me, those are the people that have already acknowledged that they are stuck, right? So there are many, many other people that don't realize yet that they might be stuck a little bit. But I always say, you know, give yourself at least a year before you call yourself, 
you know, that you have a difficult grieving piece. Or if you're grieving someone and your doctor tells you you should get medication for depression, then you might also first look into your grief and see if you're stuck in something. Do not refuse the advice of your doctor. I'm not saying that at all. But that could be an indication that you're stuck in your grief and it just culminated to that part where you need medication that helps you to kind of really find yourself again. And yes, what I find actually that unstucks the best is creativity. Because with being creative, we get into a flow kind of feel our brain just shuts a little bit off. It gets that whole part of I'm sad, I cannot live with the person, I still hear their voice, I feel them around me all the time and it can make me upset or happy at the same time, but it's unnerving. And when you create, it can be writing, it can be painting, it can be singing then you kind of give your brain the time to relax and find a new input. So going into that flow state, I find very, very helpful to just, you know, when some people are knitting, crocheting now, and I find that is so cool that they are doing that because I know how much it helps. Also with the whole situation that we are in with the pandemic, to be creative and to do something that is really getting our brain a break from all the news and all the sadness that is happening in our lives or in other people's lives. So yes, for me, it's creativity. Yes. Wonderful. And I can feel how powerful that must be. I can already <laughs> envision how helpful that would be to get your brain to click out of a more logical obsessional mm -hmm. style of hanging on to something and moving into a flow. You mentioned the pandemic and these difficult times. And I have been thinking of inviting someone onto the show to talk about grief and loss because there's so much unspoken in the past year about the tremendous number of layers of loss that we've all had to experience, mm -hmm. whether it's an actual loss of a person or loss of experiences, loss of relationships. But then I also thought, as with issues of grief, our society also pushes aside creativity. So it feels like it's just hard to jump into a conversation with someone about creativity or about mm -hmm. your loss. What are your thoughts about how difficult sometimes it is to approach these topics with people? You mean about uh, creativity or through grief? I, I guess my thought is maybe it's, it's not difficult for you because it's your area of specialty. But I think for me, I've always thought of myself as a psychologist who feels somewhat wary or unsure of myself in the area of talking about bereavement, not for lack of experience or desire to be helpful, but it's just an area that I feel a little less comfortable approaching sometimes, maybe just an old fear. I don't know. Maybe it's just a thought stuck in my head. And I also think creativity is such a massive area in general that has brought relief and joy and life to so many but that so many people also do not have an experience of being connected to. So I think I'm talking about that, that we tend to maybe push into the dark corners, these areas that are more creative, more about love, more about gentleness, more about sadness. And I just wanted to hear what your thoughts might be on that topic. Yeah, I, th I think that is a normal reaction uh, that has always been there making creativity accessible also there is this little fear you know i think it has to do that when we were born and as children we would just draw we would you know color things we would not think about anything we would sing 
wrong and right and nobody would kind of everybody just thought that is so cute and then comes that stage where someone says oh but this looks different right a house has to look like this or a car has to look like this and then we are starting to realize oh there is a right and a wrong piece and some of us we kind of stick to our guns and we say no matter what, we will create. Others are just getting into that thing. Okay, I was told I cannot paint or I cannot draw, so I leave it on the side and they never take it out again. But I always find as soon as you give someone just the possibility to use crayons or color pencils or a brush with some paint on it, and you say, hey, it doesn't matter because I know you're not a, an artist and you don't have to be an artist. Just put a mark on that paper with the color you think depicts your feeling at the moment the best. And then you can see how really in their body as well, this heaviness is lifted off because, okay, there is no right or wrong in doing anything creative when I'm just putting a mark on paper but the accessibility is still sometimes a problem but I think it's of our own making that we are not access it as much right now I am so thrilled to see so many groups you know coming together online painting together knitting together, crocheting, um, doing all kinds of creative things or all the music uh, sing-alongs, karaoke at its best with people that are leading people in sing-alongs. And I have found that over the last year, if you really want to find a place where you fit in and just try out creativity, you can actually now find it because everybody has gone online and has adapted to that challenging time in that regard. So there is something good coming out, I think, out of the pandemic. But on the other side, there is that distancing part that is happening where we can't be there, can't hold their hands, can't comfort someone with a hug when they lose their job or uh, the relationship breaks apart because we were too much on top of each other. And all those little pieces are now not possible. So I think that creativity and artists at the moment are really stepping it up to keep our population mentally healthy. And I really applaud them, everyone that does that at the moment. Beautifully said, absolutely recognized too. And I'm glad for that as well. And thank you for reminding me and my listeners that there are so many opportunities now to get reconnected if you've mm -hmm. been more isolated or if you're trying to explore a new untapped talent. There are lots of opportunities. And Jacqueline, I'm so excited that you are developing your own program and getting it ready for relaunching it into the world. Could you describe your program in a little bit more detail to us? Yes. So I have a membership that is called Healing Hearts Collective. And you join the membership. Uh, it's a half year membership. First, I had it as a monthly, but I realized, no, nah, I think people should at least stick it out for half a year. What you get is every week there is a compassionate, creative or humorous or ritual meditation piece, whatever is there. So each week has one piece, so not to overwhelm anyone that is grieving. Uh, that they can easily just listen to, to me and then do it. I have attachments that you can download. And so every month has its own theme. And it starts with kindness for yourself because that's really, really important. Take that shower again and uh, do those little steps. 
And then we go over the next month is about honoring stories about our loved one. The third month we are digging into our resilience and just bring up where we still have those tools. Then the fourth month goes into movement and movement really can mean more stories or it can really mean moving your body around meditation um, music that your loved one and you share together and just do things with that. Then the fifth one is love. And there is kind of that piece of love is the answer. And in that particular part, we go deep into rituals. And then the last one is gratefulness, where we bring all the themes together and look at all the tools that we have accumulated over the last five months and really kind of almost make a little tool belt that we have for moving forward in the future when grief comes knocking on the door and just um, is giving us another hard time because it will happen, unfortunately. And if somebody wants to stay longer than six months, they can because I will just add new pieces to the kindness part and we just go through that circle again because I know that repetition is golden when it comes to mental health and self-care. Beautiful. I am sitting here thinking about how many people in the world are connected to you <laughs> because of your work, your compassion, your kindness, your loveliness. So thank you for sharing all of that with us today. I know you also have a book and perhaps a guide to share with our listeners. Could you mention those as well? Yes, I have a book that is called From Grieving to Grateful. And it is on Amazon Kindle. Um, it's kind of from, I always forget my own title. Isn't that sad? <laughs> from I have From Grieving, grieving to grateful, grateful, Heal Your Broken Heart. Yeah, Heal Your Broken Heart. Once in a while, I will have a Healing Hearts experience where I have a full week of workshops and Q&As. And if you're interested, just go and join healingforgrievinghearts.com. It's join.healingforgrievinghearts.com. If that is something that interests you, you can find more information there. And it's a free week of just helping you along and finding those first I call them compassionate actions towards your healing. Wonderful. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you. I have a feeling you've helped many people who are listening to this show right now to get the feeling that there are different ways to go through grieving and different ways to express our love to those we have lost. So thank you for sharing everything with us today, Jacqueline. Thank you very much, Christine, for having me. We'll see you soon and I'll see you next week. Bye everyone. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Make Time for Success podcast. If you enjoyed what you've heard, you can subscribe to make sure you get notified of upcoming episodes. You can also visit our website, maketimeforsuccesspodcast.com for past episodes, show notes, and all the resources we mentioned on the show. Feel free to connect with me over on Instagram too. You can find me there under the name Procrastination Coach. Send me a DM and let me know what your thoughts are about the episodes you've been listening to. And let me know any topics that you might like me to talk about on the show. I'd love to hear all about how you're making time for success. Talk to you soon.